Windows, anybody there? Uh, can you guys hear me? sound wave hey Andrew thanks can you guys hear me okay okay looks like we are really streaming good <coughs> so we got a do we have a confirmation from YouTube uh, twitch uh, face uh, yeah Facebook as well Okay, so we got uh, YouTube. Can somebody confirm uh, Facebook and Twitch just to make sure we're all good? Also, let me know how my voice sounds. I got a new he new headset, um, so I'm not sure if it's like sounds just like the other one or better or worse. But let me know. Hi, thanks for joining, Sir Serion. <coughs> So we'll wait a couple minutes before we um, before we get started. But uh, thanks for joining, guys. It's been uh, it's been two weeks. I'm not sure if you guys were here last time. Uh, if not, well, I'll be covering some stuff right now of kind of what we what we did last time and all that jazz. Uh, let me know if the music's too loud too. Oh, does it still sound pretty low? Uh, let me see. Let me put it higher. How about how about that? Is that better? I also have some music in the background, so let me know if it's too loud or if you can't even hear it, because uh, you know that way the, the we don't have too many silences. We have some something cool to listen to as well. All right, that's just 901. Um, I think we have about 40 people at the moment right now. So let's wait another minute or so, and then uh, we, can, we can get started. Uh, let's see, so we have Facebook and Twitch. Okay, so I think we have everybody working. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Let me uh, let me switch over. Um, hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for joining. Um, my name is Miguel. I am here to create some cool stuff with you guys. Uh, most of the stuff that I want to create is stuff for you can use for conventions or for your own uh, IP to expand kind of like your ideas to you know 3D print them or make an actual helmet and stuff like that, like uh, your own collectibles or to show for pitches. Um, here's kind of what we did last week. You know, we just started on the fly, just kind of picked, so, played around with some ideas, started making basic shapes. So I think what we're going to do today is um, kind of just use what we have and let's make like two variations uh, using, so not really creating anything from scratch, but shifting things around to see if there's better shapes that we, we like uh, that work better. Or if there's some things that we could try, maybe instead of having all those holes, he has like little, little spheres that are kind of sticking out kind of like different lenses like a bug uh so we could try that and see how that looks without uh you know spend an hour pick a version really think about it and then continue to detail that out uh but yeah that's kind of where we're at uh, let's see so if you want to know more about me kind of stuff that i do uh, you can go to mag vfx mag vfx and you can check out my, my portfolio stuff that i've been working on uh, films uh commercials vr experiences uh, and where I sell or, or display a lot of my stuff is under uh, La Vesta Studio, and that's where I have a lot of the things that I create in ZBrush and then 3D printed. It's um, a few things in here. Uh, I'll be, oh, this whole website's going to be updated soon, so you might see the, the look change. 
Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, go to magvfx.com or magvfx uh, username. And uh, next week, I'm really excited. And I'm working hard on some new prints that I'm going to show you guys uh, that I haven't posted anywhere yet. It's uh, for the Lightbox Expo. Uh, if you guys are in LA, I would probably highly recommend you guys come check it out. Uh, I have a table there with some stuff that I've been creating now and I had from the past. Uh, but there's also going to be amazing artists, uh, a lot of different classes going on. So if you guys are in LA, I would highly recommend checking that out, even if it's just for one day. Uh, other shows that I do uh, are like Son of Master Palooza or Master Palooza that's coming up also I think in, a, in another week or so. Uh, so if you like monsters I would highly recommend you go to this. Uh, another show that I do also is uh, Designer Con. Um, so it's, a, it's another type of show where you could display your artwork uh, for t different types of audiences. Cool, let's see, what do we got? So uh, th those are all the events. Um, so some of the stuff that we're going to talk about creating is uh, how to create like your own IP, right? Or your own uh, creations. So here's like a example. Let me change the camera so you guys can actually see it much better. Um, here's an example of something that I did in ZBrush and then I 3D printed. Uh, and this is like the painted version that has a metallic look to it. Uh, so this will be at the Lightbox Expo uh, coming up. Two other things that I wanted to share with you guys are, are this guy. This guy finally came, uh, he's funny here. He's in gold, finally. Um, I had some renders that I did in Keyshot a while back. Um, so he's finally gonna be available in, in gold. I, I really dig the way this guy's looking, but uh, the lighting here is kind of dark, so kind of hard to see. Uh, another thing that I did uh, recently, uh, in this last week, is uh, print out this guy almost life-size in the race 3d uh, printer it took about 90 hours or so um, and that's only like one part of the helmet as you can see there's a bus there's also a back plate and shoulders uh, which I'm working on now but uh, this is like the main giant uh, helmet so this is kind of like we create ideas like this like what we're creating now and then we prototype them to see if we like the way they're going if they need to be adjusted and then you can print out like a real life-size helmet or uh, or just like your own collectibles, you know, like little things that you can have at your desk or you could sell or you could just have around to inspire you. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what we're, what this, uh, you know, podcast is all about or uh, not podcast, uh, a streaming uh, session is all about. Kind of creating your own stuff with simple shapes and you guys can see how I go about it and hopefully that helps you in, in any way. Um, but yeah, so here's uh, where we left off last week. We were doing... Um, whole bunch of uh, light booleans and adjusting some of these shapes right but now that I'm looking at it I kind of don't like this kind of cloth scarf look so I kind of want to get rid of that and then you know we'll see what we add this is okay for now just so we have something um, but here's some of the things we're doing with the light boolean so we have this shape make that. so that shape that's cutting uh, pretty much the helmet shape out like the, the head part and giving it thickness also to these plates and then here we have some uh, some kind of vent holes that we we're just playing around with so that we can see if, if they look cool design wise or not but when you do a uh, light boolean and you take off this poly frame you can actually see kind of what they're doing and you can see now the thickness here has been adjusted now there's actually thickness inside so you can actually see a guy if there's uh, somebody in there we have this generic uh, generic guy that we're using kind of just as a placeholder to see if he can actually see outwards because if you're going to be doing this for cosplay or anything like that uh, if you're going to wear it uh, how are you going to see yeah you could probably put a little tiny screen inside but um, you know uh, maybe if that's too difficult or you don't have the means or, or it's really hard to get at the time you need it um, so that's kind of where we're playing with uh they don't have to always see, you know, I kind of like when there's not many real real eyes or anything like that. But this is uh, this is kind of going some some cool direction. But now what we get to do is uh, start exploring with other shapes. So here's some of the, the references that I'm kind of looking at. Uh, just to inspire me for shapes and that type of stuff. Pretty cool, right? It's a lot of uh, nice, nice shapes. So what we could do now is kind of use some of this as inspiration to like reshape what we have so we're not doing anything from scratch we're just kind of repurposing 
and see how that all is going to work out. Uh, give me one second. Let me check the chat. Cool. It looks like everybody, there's a lot of people here. Feel free to ask questions about the steps or anything that I'm doing or events or anything you guys want. Uh, you can also, you guys can go to my Gumroad to get my um, interface, my UI, in case you guys were interested. I know there was a lot of people that downloaded from last time, so hopefully that that helps you and you guys could follow along as well, or just watch and then do it, however you guys prefer. So one of the main things we're gonna do now is start playing around with these shapes, right? We could turn off, we could start turning off those eyes because maybe we don't want we don't want any of those this time. I worked on a version last night that I'll show you guys, but I kind of want to just kind of go through some of this stuff and see, uh, so you guys can see kind of what I did, so you guys can uh, can see what it takes. Just not a lot. So this piece is one. Let me turn off boolean. It's one piece that has everything dynamesh, but everything's in groups, so you're able to have solids for like all the objects, which is cool. And in this case. I can either start playing around with the move topological at like really low opacity or intensity and start moving things around. And that works okay, but it's it's a little laggy because there's a, it's, it's heavy, there's a lot of objects, um, you know. So one thing at this point that I think is, is good to do that I did in my previous one is uh, split by groups. So that now makes it easier to uh, kind of go in to each piece, you see everything is separate uh, now the visor. The visor is separate, but for some reason it's not highlighting. Let's see. Okay, here's all the pieces. I think that's the visor. There we go. I don't know why control alt or alt clicked wasn't working. You see how it's not. No big deal. We got it right there. So the one thing we can do now is um, start playing around with the shape, you know, smooth it in more, getting rid of some of those uh, indications we had for that visor. But let's see, what can we do? Let's look at some inspiration. So at this point, we can just make big, broad changes to this and like bring it up and maybe point it upwards instead of. And this thing you see inside is just that that Boolean object. But now we can use it as an actual object to play around with this stuff. So here he's starting to look very Star Wars like and kind of pilot like so I, it looks too normal to me so I kind of want to change that so you see how much faster it is to move stuff here instead of using the move topological and that's just because the objects are getting pretty heavy but at this point we could also remesh them to be lower but I kind of like the resolution they're at like there's enough um, curvature showing that I'm okay with even though there is artifacts oh there we go now so alt's working now oh. So do that and we can continue smoothing and if it's too heavy which it is now we can go down here to maybe like 256 there we go so that's going to be a lot more manageable you see that how fast that is and we're just playing with shapes now just changing things around you know seeing what might work uh let's see so instead of going up maybe we go down So here the main thing is just to keep moving along, you know, and just pushing the ideas of where this can go. So even at this distance, this could start looking like eyes, even though they're not really, or just the visor there. One thing to remember is to always tweak from every angle. Don't just uh, stay stuck to one. So here I'm kind of thinking of a wolf skull or dog skull, kind of like 
using that as a, as a main shape, but I want it to look a little more mean. So this is where I can start just tweaking this stuff. Maybe here, we can start moving this, this guy up as well. Start playing with those shapes. And then we can start either removing or adding now uh, shapes. But you see how quickly in, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes, we're already starting to make something look different with all the work we, we did last week, or the week before, I mean. So you can start removing those, you can start playing around, or one thing I also like doing is sometimes just uh, whoop, uh, duplicating and hiding the original one. And let's see how heavy this is. So this is, um, this is a little heavy, so we can go down a little bit on resolution. We're not losing any detail, still, still there, we can always go back and sharpen it. So here's where you can start playing with some of these shapes, like want it to start coming out like that Let's see uh, okay you guys are digging it sorry I keep forgetting to check the chat but I'm starting to uh, keep track of it so you can still here you can start playing around with some of these shapes And the main idea, the main thing that we're trying to be not, not we're trying not to be precious right now and just kind of, uh, just go at it, you know, it's okay if we destroy a few things, we can re-sculpt them. So here I'm here changing things around because maybe I want this to start maybe uh, coming up. You can see how that looks. Here I feel like it's too round, so maybe we start adding like an angle here. And then that's uh, the cutter shape, so we can still move that in. Won't affect anything. What do you guys think so far? See, in just 10 minutes we can make some variations that might uh, potentially change the whole design of how we're looking at this stuff. Or it might, or you might just be like, I don't like these ideas, but at least you got to explore them quickly and find out that they're not uh, any good, or at least they informed you about what you should change with the design. But here I'm kind of liking what's happening here with the three lines mimicking each other, but I think I need to make the eyes kind of do the same. So maybe we do this a little higher. Like I said, it's okay, we're starting to lose uh, See here we can start playing around with adding some more of this stuff. Maybe trying to mimic what's happening here, maybe with the visor. And so we can start using some broader strokes. Play around your shader. That's why I like having these shaders here because then I could start playing around with like different looks or sometimes some shaders inform me of really lumpy surfaces that I can have to clean up or or sometimes they cheat and they look it looks nice and smooth but it's really not. So for me these eyes like I'm starting to like the shape but these eyes are kind of bothering me so I think I'm just gonna get rid of get rid of this by just moving it in. And even and this guy I think that's the head of the guy yeah. So we can move that in, since he's maybe an alien, an alien uh, helmet. Uh, let's see. And we can insert another shape. So now we can go in here and use a uh, click on I, and then insert primitive. Pick a sphere. I always like the sphere. So here we can start playing around with this stuff, right? Like. Do you want the eyes to be smaller because they're scarier when they're smaller? Or do you want it to be big bug eyes? Or maybe there's just a slit in 
know, maybe there's like a it's that and there's this guy. Or not lower. Oh. Groups is on. Oh, give me one second, I have to sneeze. this guy so right now what I'm starting to look at is all the shapes all the curves the way they're curving here and I feel like they're still not like there's this one's terminating straight this way and this one's going off in a tangent so I kind of want to unify those and maybe even these here this is a good time to start looking at it from like different angles to see what works like I kind of like the back of the head kind of looks like he has horns I look at it with some different shading because sometimes the shading could lie to you I really like this red it's, it's definitely not the default uh, red red material I know somebody was talking about that last time so here let's see let's turn it back the boolean so we can start seeing what's happening with the neck so here we can start smoothing this stuff out this is like this guy needs to have different types of clothes anyways See, like this is kind of working with this guy as well. Let's just uh, play around with some, maybe making it come to the front more. Oh, the boolean thing. So I got one of the boolean surface potentially. There it goes. So we can turn that back on, and because it's in the way, we can start moving it. See how that's uh, that's really nice. To, before you commit to anything, you can start playing around with it. Here we can start pushing some more. Start pushing those shapes. But now we can switch back to these guys. So now we can play around with the snake hook. To do like the more broader strokes but with the snake hook we might have to s isolate some of these guys like this guy here so if we mask him and then we invert the mask now we can start playing around with that shape without messing up the other ones so i think here's a better idea to just move them all at the same time unmask So now we're getting a whole different look. It's kind of looks like armor, which is protecting his neck, which is cool. Here we have to do the same thing and kind of go in there and isolate things. And because all these guys are polygroups, you can go in here and just isolate them. But the extrusions were polygroups too, so that's why I'm, I have to double select. So now that that's ma on mass, oh, it looks like I still have some. Well, at this point, we can switch back to uh, move topological and start playing around with just that. It works the same, but I wanted to get that spiky part first on those guys that matter. These guys are kind of hidden, so I guess they don't they don't really matter as much. But you know, how's everything going over there? Uh, anybody have any questions? is check the chat just to make sure we're all good let's see okay looks like we're doing pretty good everybody's uh no questions so far just great work pretty nice looks cool cool thanks guys um so now that we got this you know we've played around with this for like 20 minutes um Let's uh, save this as another version. And looking at it really small on the live stream uh, screen, I can see like some of these shapes are not working that well, which is good because that's kind of what we want to start uh, playing around with right now, right? See, we start mimicking some of these lines. 
now with the inside lines. And if this starts to become too heavy, just like we had some of the other ones, let's lower the resolution a little bit. Now the detail really gets lost, and if it does, we can just start over. So, I don't know, this is looking cool, but maybe we need to play around with this more up here. I don't like the way that looks. Let's, let's look at some inspiration. How's the music? Is the music cool? It's just kind of ambient music. Sound and video. Okay, awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for confirming that this is all working. Um, let's see. Let's find something else that's cool. So maybe we can do change the profile of this because this is still looking very mask, gas mask like. So maybe we can start changing this up to be because guys are going forward. Maybe this starts to make me more of a skull as well. Let's see. And this starts to come out. That's not too bad. And here maybe we can make this more like the teeth line or the denture line. But that's the whole point of this process right now, where we have everything pretty rough and we can just like start playing around with pushing and pulling. Maybe give it some bit of more of a cheekbone look. So this we can start playing with these eyes and start uh, switching back to that uh, mode, maybe do some flattening. It's looking cooler but this can also be a, a slit of some sort like maybe that's a slit he's looking through Let's see. good sound all right cool yeah it's been hot over here in the valley if you guys live anywhere in the san fernando valley it's uh it's pretty terrible right now, even at this this time of the morning. So here I'm just trying to find like some interesting elements. See, so it's starting to look a little better, but now I feel like I need to tuck that eye in because it's really not like rounded off. But I'm gonna do that with move topological. So what's everybody? Uh, did everybody have a good weekend so far? There we go. So that's starting to kind of take some shape. I can even start erasing some of this stuff and start rehitting it with um, H polish to get some kind of cheekbone like structure. But now I feel like I need to, uh, let's see, give this a little bit of brows. Oh, thanks. Thanks for checking out the art station. Yeah, ZBrush all weekend, right? I know. I wish I had more time to spend more time in ZBrush. I mostly stay in ZBrush for this concepts type of stuff. Um, if I'm doing more production ready, then I will definitely start uh, maybe like at this stage, go back and retopologizing it so that I have all the shapes kind of with nice, uh, not no wobbles, nice clean lines. But because I'm just kind of doing this for fun and um, the print and some imperfections are okay to make it look more real and less uh, mechanical or less uh, machine made. I kind of start, you know, I don't mind the happy accidents or if there's a little bit of a wobble, but not, not too much. Obviously, like something here, I will probably go back and fix. Um, but I think it's, I don't know, I think it adds a little bit of more, less fakeness, I guess. 
So here, this guy's starting to cut in to our uh, to our stuff. So we need to kind of move him back. And sometimes you'll do some designs like this, uh, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and you're like, uh, I'm not I'm not feeling it that much, which is not a big deal. Still save it. Let's have it as a version. Uh, let's see. Let's save it. I'll show you guys the uh, other one that I was working on. So kind of just doing that last night, I started doing, you know, with that same mesh. I, I kind of like the way this was going. And it was just pushing and moving, you know. I think this needs to become sharper from the front view, like, uh, or if you go to the top view. Actually, the top view is pretty cool, but I, I want it to be a little more angular here, less round and soft, because this feels like, if you touch it, it's just like a pipe. I want it to feel like sharp, like it would cut you if you try touching it. Um, but sometimes also like the effect of colors, you know, kind of changes your perception of, of the way sometimes some of this stuff is looking. Like I still like this idea of like his air intake, but I need to change it because it's a little too, it just, it's just puts a stop to everything here. You guys can see. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I have to use Dano Mesh, but because I'm trying to print a lot of this stuff, I don't. Unless I'm doing like some kind of hex pattern on like an eyeball to make it look like an insect or something like that. Yeah, I, I, I use Nano Mesh. Uh, but it depends, right? Or if there's chain armor, I could potentially use that for that as well. Um, yeah, we could. But once we get more to details, maybe we could do some Nano Mesh uh, exploration to see what, what we can add, if there's anything cool to add to this. What well, depends, right? Uh, depends where you want to. Uh, what do you want to learn? Like, what's your end goal for any of this stuff? Like, do you want to work in games? Do you want to just do your own concepts? Uh, so it depends on the workflows, because all of them are going to be kind of different. Like, uh, if you're working in production, you probably have to make a concept, and then that gets sent to the model, or somebody has to remodel this from scratch, or using this as a scan, and just, uh, you know, just poly uh, poly modeling on top of it. Uh, and then you have to learn how to do that, all the edge flow and all that stuff. But if you're just doing this for yourself and to print, then you don't have to worry about this. You can just zero mesh it or dyna mesh it. You know, I, t I tend to stick everything to dyna mesh for the longest time, and then I'll go back and zero mesh it and clean up and maybe go back and sharpen some things. But it really depends on uh, on you, like what your workflow is. So, but no man's a good place to start. Uh, their their DVDs uh, are pretty good. Or, or Pixelogic has a link of tons of people that, that do different training, so maybe look at that. Or just watching tons of streams. Let's see any advice of that. Okay, never. Oh, nano mesh. Yeah, nano mesh. It's a. Uh, it could be tricky if your objects that you're trying to duplicate are not in the center and they're somewhere else. It may have to remember the offsets, but no big deal. Let's get back to this. Uh, so, so far, this is looking pretty cool this this way from the top view, right? But I think it needs maybe a little bit more, a um, little wider base, maybe a little pointier. Let's see. But pretty much what I was doing for this stuff is kind of just manhandling to making it like just shape into this, this thing, right? Even though this thing is like probably not right. You see here, like I don't like the way that dips and it looks weird from the top. but. That's not a big deal. At this point, we could just smooth this out. If it's too heavy, we can go and uh, bring it lower. And if that's uh, that's lower, let's see. See, that's still too heavy. I guess at this point, we could just uh, zero mesh it. And that should clean it up. And because it's so such a simple shape, it'll have a lot of the edges protected so they kind of go with you know you don't lose too much of that but we're going to flatten this out so not a big deal see that's not too bad and then we can also divide it and get get the smoothness back but right now we're just trying to work on fixing this so let's go back to see how easy it is to just kind of manipulate see so now we're getting rid of that kink but now we have to get rid of it as well at the bottom so we have like a like a nice triangle as opposed to this wobbly surface. So then I could go ahead and smooth it, isolate it to see that there is other 
So here I have to switch back to my other smooth, my regular smooth, because if not, I'm going to be destroying too much, or at least too quickly. So is this uh, pretty informative for you guys? This helps uh, kind of seeing this process of like kind of what it took to get to even to this version. And then you start picking some versions uh, and start developing more of the of the rendering as well. Like one thing I did also this weekend uh, that I was supposed to do last week, but I got lazy is uh, I did a quick render. I just took it into Keyshot. And then from there, just kind of did a whole bunch of different, like five or six different renders and kind of in Photoshop, just kind of cut and paste different things for more for like more matte surface, a shinier surface, kind of have to change the color of some of the little accents, uh, just to get an idea of like, okay, it's starting to look kind of like what I want, but, or maybe I just don't like these holes. Maybe these holes are too big. And in this case, I feel like they read well from a distance for, for more of a close up or portrait. They, they don't read, too, they're too big, like an arrow or a knife can go through it. And the whole point is that you don't want to, uh, want to protect yourself being inside that helmet right so if somebody just comes up and shoves a knife in there without effort then you're probably gonna die pretty quick <laughs> uh, let's see yeah zbrush is a little hard to get used to you don't have to hate it you could have a love and hate relationship with it um, but it, there's a lot of cool things that are you know once you kind of get over those caveats then it becomes kind of like your regular workflow and you kind of get over them um, so I suggest like not hating it, just trying to find another way to do the same thing. You know, if you don't like certain set of brushes or if you don't like the, maybe your workflow needs to be adjusted or, or sometimes sometimes you'll find things that make your life easier, you know? Like Sculptress Pro, like if you have a scan and you don't want to touch everything else and you need more resolution somewhere, you could add more resolution to certain sections without affecting the rest of the mesh. Things like that, instead of having to redynamesh everything and then you lose detail here, but you have more detail in a new spot, yeah. Sixty-six. What's uh, sixty-six? <laughs> Sorry, um, but yeah, this is kind of some of the you know. At first, I had a also like a. Let's see if I can go through some of these guys. So here's some of the different passes. I was even playing with some colors because I kind of like this iridescent. Like I, I just imagine like what if his um, exhaust holes or where he takes things in are kind of like uh, those uh, exhausts in, in cars that have like fancy uh, fancy paint or fancy chrome at the edges. Like that could be cool, but I don't know, I didn't really, and then a full glass in case I wanted more reflections, a full metallic to see if it's looking, it's looking, it has a lot, a lot of little work that we need to fix, but it's looking kind of cool. This is more like glass, just to see what it, what it might look like. And then I just did a quick comp and, you know, it was like, okay, it's hitting the right direction, but what can we do at this point now to kind of change this around, you know? Because maybe we could find you something even cooler or maybe that's the idea we go with maybe that is the coolest idea we have in our book at the moment so here i'm just kind of using the flatten or the h polish to kind of flatten some of these angles even at this low low res like this you know then you have your little kinks like this you can go in here and just kind of get rid of them if they're like really annoying the main thing is you want to have clean forms and if you don't then everything just kind of falls apart once you add detail it just gets worse oh that's awesome that's good to know then yeah sometimes you have to step away and come back to it and now you love it right and there's so many workflows, so there's not like one thing that you have to follow. It has to be this way. It's like you could do whatever you want. You know, you could bring stuff out from other places. Like one thing we're going to do um, for that little gold guy that I, that I showed you guys early, or in case you guys just joined for uh, this little guy. I started a sketch in, uh, in the iPad, iPad Pro, uh, iPad Pro and, um, and it's really low res, kind of like what we're doing right now. And then I just exported back to, export it to as an OBJ to ZBrush, and then I made that, you know. It was just like a 20 minute sketch that I did while watching TV, but I was able to at least get an idea out and then kind of refine it here. And you know, now it's a full product. Uh, at the moment, I just want to make a, a helmet, but I, I was thinking that it might be cool to just go all the way and make a full, uh, a full, a full suit. 
that's why I started also gathering some of these references for, uh, you know, like the different type of clothing that I might want him to have, like based on reality, like this kind of stuff. So he's like a sleek fighter or sleek warrior, um, you know, stuff like that. Or, you know, this is cool too, but maybe this starts to get a little too bulky. I want him to be pretty slick, like, uh, like one of these guys. Maybe he could have a little bit of bulk, but not too much. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. If it also, depends on your interest. If you guys like think it's cool or not, or you know, or if this is even going anywhere. Maybe the first version is going somewhere, but this one's not, or maybe this one is. Uh, could add to to that, you know. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think I'm liking these shapes too. This, this, I think this is working for me more than uh, than the previous one. But it was good to explore that because now you're like, oh, I know where that's going. I don't like it. Let's stop. Um, so I'm here I'm kind of doing the same, but I need to adjust that Boolean shape. Just trying to get get this to look more sharp. You know, so that it doesn't feel as round as it does here. Like, you see how there's like a curvature? I'm going to try to remove some of that. But the reason you're seeing that hole is because I need to switch uh, this guy him in a little more so he doesn't uh, start penetrating through so here you can start seeing some of the angles see but sometimes it's hard to see unless you change shader other things we can do too is to enhance this i kind of wanted to have a sharp edge here so do something like that right it doesn't have to be perfect like i was i was saying earlier but we can change the shape to be a little nicer so now we can run a, a trick like there is that polish brush and you can do that as well but i prefer to kind of do it as a, as a global thing uh polish by feature and I just go 100 every time just to see what that's going to do and sometimes it does some really cool stuff sometimes it doesn't depending on the density of your mesh um, but here i just want those edges to kind of become sharper you see they're, they're kind of becoming sharper but not the way i want them to uh let's do this crisp edge Also, maybe this is too dense, so let's maybe go a little lower. Yeah, it looks better. So let's try that again. And sometimes you have to guide it a little more. And by guide it, I mean like, um, like let's say we want this edge to be kind of coming up. Maybe I want that edge to be like a like a raised edge, right? So now we could hit it with this this guy here. Make that a super sharp edge. And that's kind of what we're gonna do to the rest of the model too. At at some point, it's just we're not done with the design part, so I don't want to go ahead and do any of that. So here it could have like three planes, right? It could have this. When I'm talking about planes, it could have, um, oh, let's switch over to this guy. It could have this plane, that plane, that plane. So it doesn't just feel like a round object. It's your typical. Right, so then we can soften those up a, a little bit. And sharpen that one in the middle. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be going to the summit. Are you guys going to the summit? That's uh, happening so soon. All right, so we got a little bit of an edge there. So let's see what what happens now. We run uh, this polish wave feature. Let's divide it once. Oh, one thing we can also do is run Dynamesh with polish. That one's much nicer for some reason. Usually it's the other way around, but um, it looks like in this case, it's uh, it's all good. Yeah, if you guys are going to the to the summit, um, let's see, I've been live for 44 minutes. Awesome.
Yeah, so uh, any of you guys going to the summit, if you guys are, we should uh, definitely all meet up if, uh, or get some coffee or hang out. Or if you guys uh, join the stream and want to chat, you know, uh, feel free to, like, if you see me around, just say hi. I'd love to chat with you guys. And for those guys that are not going, make sure you guys tune in and watch it uh, live. Because uh, that's, that's also cool. At least you get something out of it. So let's see where's, where this is going. See, so that kind of changed the overall flow of this guy. Now he feels a little more, the intention is there, you know? Um, still, I think I like the three quarter in the side view, but the front, the front needs some help. But we're gonna just fix, maybe just fix the top of this. So remember, just, it's okay to be rough with all this stuff. And the main thing is just to move move things around and see where things are, are kind of going. Like maybe this is starting to become too long and I want to shorten up the back a little bit. Oh, it's too quiet on your end? Uh, yeah, it's, it's there, it's, it's, the, the volume is like pretty low. Oh, YouTube's in. Oh, interesting. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, post them up and we'll just keep talking. It's all good. So here, I like that shape in the back where like it's it's rising up and there's more of a cone shape, like that shape that's happening. And then we could adjust this guy too. Thanks for being here on uh, Sunday morning. I know it's a, it's a tough one to get up after maybe a fun night getting up early. Um, but, you know, that's the only way sometimes we can learn or, or try new things. And that's the whole point of this this, uh, this stream uh, is to just kind of try new things and show you guys like how I go about doing stuff so you guys can do your own and hopefully inspire other people to do other cool things, you know. But yeah, we'll take you through the whole process of all this stuff, like uh, from the 3D print part to the design part. And if there's any any questions, uh, maybe we can even show like how this would look like for a production piece as well, if, if you guys are interested. But it all depends on time, right? Like I'm doing this every other week. Uh, eventually, hopefully every week, if you guys uh, dig it, you know, uh, you guys let me know if you guys think it should be a weekly thing. Uh, we could do that as well. I know last time I, I, I uh, talked to you guys, uh, some of you guys were like, yeah, every week sounds good. And I think uh, that could be possible if, if I guess I get my numbers high enough and people are interested in this, in this stuff. So let's see what that looks like. See, the other thing too is that uh, something to remember is sometimes we need areas of rest. So sometimes we don't want to like fully just uh, add detail for detail sake, you know, which is it's fun to do, but it doesn't help your design. So here I kind of, I like what's going on. I just don't like that it went all the way to the front. So here I probably want to kill it earlier. So that it's almost like a fade, um, kind of like these guys here. Okay, cool. No, thanks, Soundwave. I, I really appreciate it. If you guys are digging this, uh, and if this is going to help you in any way, that's that's what I'm here for, you know? So here, I want to make maybe make it a little more menacing. Make it sharper. Okay, so this is going somewhere. I'm kind of digging where this is going. Maybe still got to clean some of these shapes up, because these are looking... Let's uh, smooth some of this stuff out. So here we either wanted to follow this curve or we wanted to follow its own curve. But maybe in this case, let's uh, just dynamesh it first. Maybe lower. Uh, so you remesh it or dynamesh it. And then uh, the awesome part is that you could just cut stuff out. And now we 
we can start playing around with uh, kind of what's the direction that we want it to go. Maybe it needs to come more forward and attach itself in a different way. Like following that line. Sometimes a subtle little thing you do like this can make a big impact, you know, it's like, you see, we need to make sure it tapers in. See, now it feels more incorporated, like it's supposed to be there. Oh, thanks, guys. Appreciate uh, your feedback. So some of the things that we're going to cover today, we'll probably pick the version that we like and maybe play around with some alphas uh, to show you guys how you add more details that are maybe still even big details and small details to kind of balance it out. So we have like the layer cake effect. We have like a big base and smaller and then smaller so that everything feels like it belongs instead of just having like really big and really tiny. And then it just looks like noise and you're like, this doesn't make sense because the structure is not working for it, you know? And maybe some of this stuff is still not working, you know, uh, but that's the whole point. We're going to fix that today. So here we can start playing around with some more planar stuff again. All right, and then maybe. Like maybe instead of all this stuff being round, it, it starts to sharpen up. Uh, could be cool as well. Same thing with that guy. See how that guy's like pretty lumpy. So something happened there too. So here's where we could start playing around with uh, doing the polish on the Dynamesh. And see what that does. Some stuff is going to get better, some stuff will not. But you see overall, at least now some of these edges are kind of getting cleaned up. See, so now we can start getting this guy flattened or a little more flattened. Or we're having issues like this and we want a straight cut. We can just kind of cut it in. Right from there, maybe add a little more resolution. And then could go, start going and adding little hints of. Uh, comes in to make some of these areas feel like they belong and they're a little bit machine made or, or handmade but to precision so now we got to take care of that back part so I feel like this part's working pretty good Now we had we could start smoothing this area out because it's not nice. It just looks too lumpy. So I kind of like where that's where that's going, but let's see what happens if we just if we pull that out. Like, I don't like what's happening here at the stopping point. So maybe this. Let's see. Oh. Kind of like that better. And I feel like this needs to go up higher too. See, I like where that's going. So now we can fix some of this stuff in the front. Now that we got the major shapes, let's hit this guy up a little bit more because he's, he's got a little lumpy. There we go. Just to get that edge back. So let's go in here. Well, before we continue, something that's super important is to save often. Uh, let's see. So even within the last uh, 
probably 10 15 minutes let's see where we where we were at let's load the so you know, from those two you see uh, quite the difference like for the potential of where i was thinking it was going now it feels like the structure the overall like first part of the layer cake is uh, it's starting to get there but now we need to start fixing the front part what do you guys think pretty cool or going in a good direction so here <clears throat> we could do a couple of things I can um, erase all this which part we're gonna do at least soften it so that we get rid of any lumpy stuff. And then what we can do is just introduce some of that stuff again. So that's starting to look kind of uh, soft, right? But what can we do? We can do the sharpen. So if you do the reverse, the reverse of that, just holding alt then we can start getting an edge out of all that stuff see so the first one is just kind of to indicate where like the dents are going to go and this one's kind of pushing everything up so that it feels much nicer and cleaner let's see what's underneath so there it's kind of getting covered so you don't need to worry about it and here we have you know kind of like what we had with the upper part of the helmet it's starting to look weird because it's getting lumpy now we can go in here and start cleaning some of that stuff up. Let's see. Oh, thanks, thanks. I'm glad. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I think the high free, uh, some of the stuff in the bottom we might simplify, or maybe make more. Maybe have that be more the more complex part because it's where it takes in the air and it ex ex exhausts it out. No, that's just a standard, um, damn standard. Yeah, I really like using that. Uh, the custom one is uh, this mag knife. That's the one that I, I like using as well. So I'll show you guys uh, the difference between both of these, right? So like, damn standard is the one I use for mostly everything. But if you look at the profile, it's round. It's like rounding things out, right? Which for this stuff, it's okay. But once we want to get harder edges, it's not so cool. So what the mag knife does, it's, it's part of my uh, interface that you guys get for free if you guys want it. It's, it's more of a cut, like more like a like if you did a razor blade cut, you know. Uh, so that's kind of the difference. Uh, it has a little bit of a pinch, but I don't like the full pinch because it just kind of um, destroys things too much, especially topology. But I, I, I do like using the H polish quite a bit on this stuff, just so we get something that's like nice and clean and if you want to repeat it you can just press one and that just repeats it um, but here we're we're getting all this stuff up I guess I went outside the edge see so now we have a, a very hard edge in there that should do kind of what we we're talking about just kind of fix some of the stuff and then you'll have a little bit of lumpies kind of like this stuff here so let's go back to the mask you can start making your brush pretty big and start adjusting some of those things you know i'm just looking at this this edge here so like the outer edge that's what i'm trying to kind of remove because then what i could do is like come in here select that one select this inner edge which is probably easier it and then from the top view just destroy it smooth out a little bit and then kind of hit it one more time and you see now it's nice and clean kind of sharper it actually looks more menacing pretty cool compared to what we had just just now uh, let's see we go back a few steps So 
So we go from a surface that's like kind of lumpy and uh, too thick, I guess, too thick looking, to uh, something that looks more sharp and, and then it'll be cut inside with, uh, I guess we can use this one to turn the booleans back on. Yeah. See, so it starts to cut that away. So now it feels more, um, let's see, where is that guy? So now we can turn the boolean back on and we could adjust him as well so that the overall thickness of that is going all the way to the edge all the way to the pointy part oh i guess i moved it down here let's see <laughs> Yeah, sometimes the, the res gets super low and it's like really annoying and you're like, I can't see anything. You have to blur your eyes. Uh, or the low, or the topology or the, the pixelation on the screen too, right? Um, so now we have that looking a little more sharp and more menacing, you know? Uh, what we could do later is put a, we could put something in there so it looks like a screen or like some kind of mesh so that it, you never see inside. Uh, but we'll, you know, we're taking care of the big things now. So I think that's, Take care of a lot of this stuff. Let's go and polish this a little bit. So kind of going in there and getting rid of this lumpy stuff so that it, the form is a lot cleaner. See, so now this is kind of bothering me a lot, like this space here because of this stuff. So now we can play around with this one and just kind of see what we can do with it. Like, do we bring it up? Let's get rid of these guys first. There we go. So we could do something like that or it's funny, it kinda looks like it's sticking his tongue out. snap yeah so here we can start start mimicking this stuff I guess uh, to see how that that helps this design sometimes just mimicking the same shape uh, once or twice changes it you see this feels a little a little more powerful to me so we can see what we can do uh, Play around with some shapes. So now we can also change these guys here. Because these guys are, you know, looking cool for the old design. But now they feel like maybe they need to mimic that neck more. So we can smooth them out a little bit. Right? The full, the whole thing just destroy or kill your babies type of si uh, situation. Like, I know you want to fall in love with the ships you're making, but they're not quite there yet. So it's okay to go in and start destroying them and changing them up, you know? So here we're going just going really broad strokes. And we're gonna try to mimic what's happening with the neck part, right? Like how it arches down. And because we're doing this with the topological and everything is uh, separate, it's easier to do. could move it all as one unit but sometimes uh, you want to control one more than the other like here like maybe that bigger step was good to do them all together but now this other one I, I don't want to affect them all I could mask I could mask things but then um, it's a little too time consuming maybe we have a stepping happening here see like something more like that Maybe should be following that a little more. Oh, thanks. So here we can smooth them, and now they, you know, they have uh, their issues again because they're flat or they're uh, round where you want it to be kind of flat. 
So what we could do here is go in here with the polish, give them an edge, go to the next one, give that guy an edge, next guy, our next two guys, give those guys edges, and then also from the front. Use that out damn standard. Push those edges out. Push that in. This needs more resolution, so that's the problem. But see, I think I'm digging this one a lot better than the, my previous one, but it still needs some uh, some work at the top. Let's see, what can we do to this? Let's hint at this stuff again. Okay, put an edge out here and see what happens. Yeah, put an edge out there, I think it works. Let's do that again. That's nice, I think that will work. I can move this this guy probably now. <laughs> Any questions? so far all right that's, that's cool it gives me time to work on this so it looks like the only thing we're keeping from the original design is well not even we're gonna change it to changing the back of this so let's smooth it out get rid of any lumpy stuff so I'm using kind of like the smooth stronger option here instead of using the actual smooth stronger brush I'm just using the smooth modifier to make it make all my smooths like a hundred times faster. So here we're gonna add some more in that edge back. So we're just redefining those planes. And let's see, let's run Dynamesh, see what that does. See that got rid of a, a lot of those little little things that this brush makes you see how there's the little dots because I'm making it way too big so Dynamesh would kind of get rid of that once now that I'm using uh, the X polish on it but you know if there's something else here that you need to touch up you can just do it really slightly so that it smooth stronger even stronger I don't know I think at some point it just stops stops doing anything um, I think at, at basically what the smooth standard or, or not smooth stronger is doing uh, is making changing that option under the let's see where is it smooth modifiers uh, yeah just changing the weight so if you hold the if you hold control while in the menu it kind of explains to you what it's kind of doing so I think what that smooth stronger has it just it just has that active at one, and that's what I keep changing. So instead of coming here to this menu every time, I just put it as part of my interface and I just go back and forth. I just got to remember to go back to zero because sometimes I don't want to smooth everything too much, and that would just you know destroy everything. Uh, let me give you guys a link to the interface. Let me just uh, zoom out on this. Uh, quick for you guys so let me put it on the chat so that's what you can find the interface uh, I know some issues had some people had issues with it being a dart raw 
which is almost the same as a zip. So I just did that zip and not everybody should be able to download. I think some people on the Mac had some issues, but you guys should be, uh, should be good. So there's the download, uh, let's see. Yeah, you could increase the row on this stuff too. I just sometimes don't, cause I'm just kind of cranking through this stuff. And it's like, it's not as important cause I'm gonna run Dynamesh and that's gonna get rid of that stuff. But it's good to know that the row uh, will fix it. Maybe I'll try that next time as well. So here I'm digging where this is going. So let's see, let's, um, let's save it <laughs> before we go anywhere or continue on. Uh, my my render of choice recently has been uh, Substance Painter, but this doesn't have any UVs and we haven't uh, Z remeshed it and then ran UVs so that we have something to paint on, which we'll do later. But in this case, uh, we're just going to try going with uh, our old friend Keyshot. So let's send this to Keyshot and see what we can do. Yeah, I'm left-handed. It's so... Simple things for most people are more difficult for me. So my interface is, uh, so if you're right-handed, switch it over to the opposite side. Uh, it might help you. <laughs> but I had to customize it because there were so many different ones I tried for different people. And it's like everybody's mostly right-handed and it always have to cross my ha my arm. So with this case, I just move everything to uh, to the left hand, left hand side. All right, so let's, let's do some renders. You guys can see this, right? Yeah. So here, you know, everything looks kind of crappy. It's not the best. Uh, so I always start with an 85 millimeter since uh, it's more uh, what you were using the portrait. Uh, also in their environment, they get rid of the ground because it's just obviously a floating helmet. So if we have shadows in the ground, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so one of the first things I do is uh, put an HDR on. <coughs> Yeah, you could also do that, uh, Gilbert. It's true. Awesome. Yeah, take the interface. Uh, enjoy it. And let me know if there's any improvements you guys can make. I'll, I'll let you guys know if I update it. Um, yeah, I plan to print this because I wanted to make a collection of helmets. Um, of, of little helmets and then maybe the big ones as well. Uh, since I have the printers just idle, why not, you know? Um, what type of printer am I using? I'm using uh, both. So I use uh, the Form 2, the Slash, uh, CR10, and also a, um, a Race Through the N2 Plus. So that's probably my preferred one for all the for all the helmet stuff because it, it could print pretty big. Uh, that helmet that I posted earlier, uh, that you guys that you guys saw this guy, he's a little smaller than life size because I wanted to print it all in one shot. Uh, and th one of the biggest problems that I had was that all these spikes require a lot of supports. Uh, so I was trying to make it life-size, but it kept failing and I, I wanted to have it ready for the show. So I just decided to just shrink it down a little bit. I think it fits my daughter, uh, that's like three or four years old, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I plan to do more of these and then just kind of hang them and have, maybe have a display somewhere. Uh, but the main idea is just, just to reproduce like cool little things that you could have in your desk. see what else uh, yeah the life size stuff so hopefully if you guys if you guys want bigger life stuff stuff I could cover more of that and also cover like what else you can do to make stuff look really cool on display uh, yeah I think I'm gonna get the form 3 eventually it just uh, recently I just fixed the form 2 I send it in for service and uh, it has a brand new laser so I kind of want to use it a little more before I decide to switch over to the form 3 but that's, uh, yeah, hopefully before end of year. If not, we'll, we'll see soon. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, any questions you guys have? Uh, what type of printer? How long some of this stuff takes? Uh, also, there's a lot of post-processing uh, that happens uh, that most people don't talk about. So we can also talk about that as well, like how to orient your prints so that uh, the most of the detail stays and then the, all the supports are where you don't need it, uh, where you don't see it, like underneath and... Uh, cutting these pieces like a lot of these models that I make like that uh I'll show you guys this one's glued so it's easier to pick up uh like this guy right this guy gets printed in three pieces uh, and I'll show you what the pieces look like just because uh 
If not, I'll have tons of supports going from here to here, touching both sides of the surfaces that have a lot of detail. Um, so sometimes it's better to kind of split them up. Uh, kind of like with a key, you know, like here's one that I had from uh, my previous show. Uh, so there's like a key. And then that key fits straight into the chest piece, uh, you know. And if I had like a torso, maybe I had like the rest of the torso, another piece, and then like the underwear part and, or the hips, like in another piece to make a full character in each leg separate. That way you don't have to play around with like supports everywhere. Or if you have supports, they're in parts where like it doesn't matter, like at the bottom of this. Um, hopefully that, that helps uh, you guys understand what I'm talking about. Just actually showing you that part. And therefore then you just glue it together or, you know, whatever. Uh, what do I use for post curing, like the um, FDM stuff or the the resin stuff? Most of the resin stuff, uh, I made my own curing box and my own uh, ultrasonic cleaner with alcohol. So I could show you guys that as well. If you guys are interested, I could make a little bit of like a little segment in the next stream about like what the print looks like when I get it and what, what it looks like afterwards after I clean up and like how long it has to be in the, in the, in the UV light and... Uh, all that stuff you know how long do you leave it in the alcohol for let it dry and then you know put it you know the whole process of all that stuff it, it, maybe it's kind of boring for some people but if you're starting to print it's pretty essential for you guys to know how to how to do that stuff because you're gonna have to do it and, and you need to know how long you know set aside a few hours to paint and cure and all that stuff before it's ready to uh to show even this giant one uh overall as a big picture it looks great you know, but there's a lot of fixing that I'm not happy with that I want to fix. Um, like at the bottom of this stuff, it's like a lot of things that I'm going to have to fix. Little stringy stuff and, and Bondo or uh, Resin Cure. Use, uh, use uh, what is it called? Uh, Two-part epoxy. Let it dry, sand it, that type of stuff. Yeah, don't mess with the time. Exactly. Uh it's important that you guys can see like what's what's going on here. Let's switch to scenes. So a lot of the ones that I like testing with are like let me see the Moltic stuff. It's pretty cool because it's kind of like very flat, like something like a Stormtrooper or like some kind of you know like some metallic cool helmet would would have less more of a flat flat look. like a matte black look which I like because I can see if the forms are reading good or if things are looking too blobby still or like oh I need to refine these edges uh, but here I feel like okay the layer cake effect is starting to kind of take effect it's all good so now some of the details we can use is to kind of help enhance some of this stuff uh, I think the biggest thing that I see here that I want to change is um, this top part See, everything has like a nice sharp angle or semi sharp angle, but this part is like like really blobby, like flat to blobby in here as well. I think those are the main things that bother me that it feels like they're not made from the same machine, even though they're made from the same person. Uh, underwater now. Get to, uh... Yeah, I used to use underwater. I tried a couple different things, but for me, alcohol seems to always work the best because it dries quicker. You put it on, on next to a fan. It dries up and you can put it in the UV uh, cure tank right away. Or the, yeah, the UV cure tank. But I haven't tried the underwater uh, putting the light on top of that. So maybe I'll give that a try as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, well, the cure box that I made would like cost like, I think the most expensive part for the UV cure box is like the light, which is like 40 bucks. And then the rest I made mirrors that I attached together that I could take apart for, for storage. Maybe I'll, I'll put on my gun road the things that hold the mirrors so you guys can try that out. Um, that works pretty good for me. And the other expensive part, but it's still less than 200 bucks is uh, the ultrasonic cleaner. I got a larger one and it's working pretty well and it's only 150 bucks. And it, you could fit a lot of prints at the same time. So I went bigger so I could do almost all my cure and like, Okay, for the next two hours, I'm just going to UV cure and do all the stuff and do it all at one shot instead of doing individual little tiny pieces as they come out of the printer. Uh, no, I mostly use, um, I use mostly mesh mixture just to hollow stuff out, but for supports and infill and all that stuff, I just use the um, Idea Maker or, uh, or a Simplify 3D. Usually they have pretty good um, 
a pretty good uh, setting. You know, I do mess with the uh, Cura as well, but I, I really don't like Cura as much. I have to for the CR10, but I'm getting better results with the uh, Simplified 3D. But yeah, let's continue with this thing. So here, I'm digging where this is going. You know, I just I just wanted to see like, okay, it's going somewhere. Um, like it's it's pretty decent. Here I can play around with some plastics as well. Just to see like what happens if I just assign a plastic. Now it's like a little matte color. What do you guys think? Because if you look at a lot of this uh, like Star Wars stuff, uh, let's see, let's find something cool. Um, are you guys digging the direction so far or what do you guys think? So, like some of this Star Wars stuff that I've been seeing lately, like this stuff, right? Like if you really look at it, just a color change, but the shape is pretty simple. It's really too like, it changes direction like once or twice. All this stuff is pretty simple. Um, or even like this stuff, right? Like it's a lot of it, it's like the paint job. It's not actually like the surface of detail on this, on this helmet. Of course, the detail is cool too. You know, there's a lot of stuff that has like really cool shapes. Like this is, I really like how this is like, there's nothing back here, but then there's little hints of little shapes. Like that type of stuff is kind of what I want to hit, you know? But I like where this is going. So I could just, you know, play around with like some different colors as well. You know, maybe some white with blue. Um, but that's what I'll probably do some paint overs and see what that looks like. Or even just glass. I don't know. Glass is always cool to see. Um, or different types of metals, you know. Like what happens if I were to polish it to be, you know, like a darker metal. With maybe some trims that are rubber, you know. So I do this, you know, spend like 10 minutes doing this. And it's like, okay, I see the potential. I see what I need to fix. This stuff here. The transitions here and that's looking pretty good then we could uh add some uh we could, uh, we could start playing with some alphas just to see what that looks like since we'll have like 40 minutes left we could do that how do you guys like the pace is the pace pretty good like since we're talking about design is it working for you guys or is it too slow i just don't want it to be boring you know so if you guys there's any suggestions of how to make it more interesting uh maybe me talking less <laughs> Or talking more whatever you guys think you guys tell me since you guys are on the other side so you see just adding that now I think that helps a lot now this is where it's a little messy like so here we can mask this part because that's all kind of one but this is not this is kind of weird so we could flatten that part Reverse it, fill that up, smooth it, flatten that part out. And it's where I, we can either add a line or help define that edge. It's getting lost like this edge. It's not perfect, but I just want to make sure I'm hitting everything right because then I could clean this up anytime. Here we could either put something that cuts it, which I think in this case it will work. So here you have to be careful because my brush is too big, so. edge and we have a little bit of a lumpy surface there we can go in here and just touch that up because that's Let's smooth it a little bit cool I think that's that's working pretty well 
Let's see, good direction, digging it, awesome. Should put my reference reference up. Um, yeah, I guess I could do something like this, right? So you guys can see. Maybe shrink my interface a little bit. I'll start using pure ref, and that should probably help for a lot of this stuff. How's that? Is that taking up too much real estate? Okay, the pace is good. Awesome. Yeah, because we're just right now, we're just exploring with design. Once we're doing like more, uh, once we have the design done, then we can do more generic stuff like, okay, zero mesh it, update some subdivisions, UV it, like more technical stuff. But this is like the first, um, you know, just exploring the shapes to see what we can get, like having the fun, like the whole fun of this, you know? Or like starting to see like, oh, there's a few lumpy things here we could fix. So now you can go in here and like, Kind of check that stuff out and do like a brute version of that of uh, fixing it so here we can uh, make sure we didn't grab any other edges we don't want to grab invert it and we can either do uh let's see where is it at surface let's see what happens if we just do polish Do it one more time. Takes a while. Uh, let's see. Let's go back. So that should have helped to just get rid of some of those things. But if sometimes if it doesn't, what you could do is help guide it. And that's why I have this guy here to just kind of move the light around. Because sometimes some of the stuff is hard to see. See, like here, there's like a little bit of a, a shadow. Which most of the time, it'll probably be okay. But it's where I switch to something like clay, right? Go to clay, bring the intensity down to like six, something super small. And you see this shadow here, right? Just start hitting it. And have it become less of a shadow, you know? But hit it really, really, really slow. And then smooth it. Hit it. See, maybe there's another shadow back here. That's where we could smooth, uh, yeah, smooth stronger. Maybe right here, there's a little bit of a flatness, right? Smooth it out here, you can see it there, definitely. You can see there's a little bit of a lump situation. Smooth it. So this is almost like you're bonding the pieces together, you know, like just getting rid of any, any little imperfection. Uh, we can also switch to this guy and start seeing like, oh, look, there's a little, little guy back here. Smooth it. Just getting rid of anything that's huge is really like annoying, you know. Let's see. Faster slave, yes. <laughs> Red laser eyes, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that could be a cool thing, right? You put some lights inside, like you have like a little bit of screen. Um, could be, it could be cool. Totally possible, especially with 3D printing. Okay, awesome. Well, if it's good, then I'll just keep up the pace this way. You know, I'm, I'm having fun. We're definitely playing with the shapes and seeing what works and what doesn't, you know, but it's the whole point of exp exploring this stuff. Uh, oh, like share like the Pinterest board. Yeah, I could do that too. I mean, I, I hardly use Pinterest boards, but you know what? I should more. Um, maybe that's what we can do because I'd rather have that than having this take up more real estate just because uh, some of the stuff is not, I'm not even using, you know, like some of the other references that I have up is, uh, is insects. For me, like inspir uh, my inspiration is insects. So I always have like images like this going on because like you never know what kind of lines from like a crab I can take to help break up my design like this stuff here or the way the joints are here. Like maybe I introduce like a little bit of a bulgy surface with, with a cut for flexibility. 
So there's a lot of other things that I have open that maybe don't do anything at the moment. You know, they're just kind of there for, for me uh, to see if I get inspired by any of this stuff. But yeah, I think I'll share the, the Pinterest board. That's probably easier and then it's online all the time. So it's not like uh, if you guys want to use it for something yourselves, you, you guys can. But that's a good idea. I should write that down. Uh, this is my second time streaming uh, so i two weeks ago i did the, the stream uh just kind of getting started and then this is my second one so i'm kind of testing the waters to see if you guys like it i'm i'm digging it so far like doing these little helmets is like a cool little project we could wrap up in like two or three sessions uh, i think if we did it weekly we could probably wrap these up in a little quicker uh, i didn't want to jump forward and just start doing my own stuff and then be like like show you guys the process you know like oh we changed the design the design changed a lot but now we're really happy with this so we can actually move forward to make a prototype and then from there even see if there's anything we have to change because there might be something huge that we need to change and we can do that now uh like i was telling you guys uh from my previous stream uh let me see let's see if i can find this stuff for you guys uh, i had like a design sheet uh design change that i did in photoshop I don't know where I left it, but uh, yeah, I had this example of like on the previous thing I had three the layer cake thing, but it wasn't fully working, so I had to remove one of the the bottom oh, maybe here. Uh, no, for, well, for this guy, I had to go ahead. I had this. I had a this one really big, like bigger than all these, and it was competing too much with all this stuff. So actually shrinking it made it kind of help the overall design uh, so sometimes you just have to go ahead and print it out and see it and you're like it doesn't work um, but that's all that's why FDM printers are here for right so that we can uh, go ahead and do tests and then see it. it takes a few hours it doesn't cost much money but you can see if things are working or not Yeah, putting stuff in your own toolbox is cool too. Let's see. Fiber mesh, yeah. Yeah, maybe we could explore some stuff with fiber mesh where like maybe we have a contrast of a uh, of fur, you know, because this guy's maybe somewhere where it's really cold. So you have the hard surface to to uh, to fur aspect uh, kind of to play around with. Yeah, I like bugs. Uh, I collect I collect tons of bugs actually. That's kind of what inspires me. Or whenever we're outside, I try to capture them, take photographs, and if they're still alive, I let them go. If not, then I kind of freeze them and put them in my collection, take macro photos of them. Uh, I started an Instagram with just photography that stuff, but uh, I I don't do it as often as I want to. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, sea creatures are also awesome. That's another one that I have. Um, and I have tons of folders, but I, I made some just specifically for like the stream to kind of inspire me. Uh, let me show you guys. So we show you it's a sea life one too. There's not a lot of images here, but you know, it's cool to see these guys. These guys, you know, like especially if you're doing like some kind of alien, maybe you're making armor for like an alien like this. So like, what would you want to uh, protect? You know, like the head because that has a brain, but maybe you want to leave this exposed so he can talk. Um, so things like that, I always, I'm always thinking about, even though sometimes I don't move on, on that stuff. Yeah. I want to do something with a goblin shark. Cause I think it looks pretty menacing. Like if you just had teeth exposed, it kind of come out like an alien uh, mouth and just shoots out. That would be pretty scary. Or maybe it has like some kind of, um, protection on the helmet to, so that it doesn't attack you. That, that could be cool too. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the stuff that I'm constantly just looking at. You know, um, sometimes there it doesn't like one of the references you might see like, well, there's a turtle. It's like, well, why? Uh, well, because the armor, the way the armor blends into like the skin or like the big scales to small scales or the, the beak, maybe the beak gives me an idea of like how to design something. Um, I think one thing we might do in the stream that I just remember that I had was a, a Kappa, like a little um, turtle character. 
they maybe will have him um, steal some of these like like uh, scales from this guy to make armor and that could be kind of cool because it's kind of organic and hard surface at the same time uh, and the in the character I just I started like two months ago and then I forgot about it um, so maybe we could use that as a, as a full character because he's already kind of he's not fully done but he's blocked off enough where you guys can see the rest of the progress if you guys are interested if not then if this is like kind of boring or you don't want to see just helmet or more hard surface stuff or, or want to see organic stuff too we can also do that but I kind of wanted to do this so that you guys can make your own stuff and 3D print it and then show it to the world and see what how people react to it or, or just for yourself you know um, let's see yeah that nature <laughs> uh, why not anybody can do it man you just have to be passionate about what you're talking about and then Everything just comes natural. Uh, my Insta is MacVFX. Yeah, Goblin Sharks are awesome. Uh, Blue Blood Crab. Oh, I'm going to check that out. Uh, let's see. Oh, thanks. Yeah, if, if you guys think that's cool, I, I like talking design. I'm always looking at things, at shapes, just to see what might work for me or, or or might not work you know like the previous thing we tried we tried a few things didn't work out no big deal we're making this uh awesome so we have about 30 minutes so let's let's start playing with some alphas let me just save this before we uh continue and at the end we could do like some screenshots of like comparison to see like where we where we went to to where we're going and if things are looking cooler or not Uh, microphone up a bit uh, sure uh, let me see this is a new mic so also it might be that's not the greatest I decided to go wireless and maybe it's not the best idea uh, is this better or, or is this better now cool well let me know if, if it doesn't sound uh, right still cool so let's see uh, I found some uh, alphas so the main thing to when you're applying alphas you go to your standard um, and I also just go to drag direct um, and let's import some alphas. I found these online yesterday. They were all free. So you guys can download it. I'll put a link to where I got them from. Um, I just wanted to do that so that you guys can see that you guys can download free stuff that works. Um, I think a lot of these were from like E3D and then uh, JRO. Uh, so these are some of the alphas, right? Obviously some of these are, this is just like the pack that I downloaded. Some of these are probably not be very useful for me, but some of them are. So I kind of wanted to show you guys like how I go about using that. So like here, you know, you can play around with putting some of that stuff in there, maybe at a different scale. But this is one of the alphas that it kind of doesn't do much for me because it's it doesn't go with any of this this design, you know. Uh, some of the ones I'm looking for more are, that are important for me are. Uh, more like this type of stuff you know like if i wanted him to have an access panel to like maybe this is the way they have to remove this helmet uh just make sure you have enough division so that when you apply it um things work and obviously here we have to probably put our intensity up a little more so it's more visible so you could put a panel like that you know a little detail little Greeble stuff, but sometimes some, some of that stuff doesn't work. Like one of the ones that I was playing with last night that I thought was a pretty cool one is, is this guy here. So it could be applied come a, kind of different ways, right? Like through the outside, or if you want it to be like a ventilation system, if you just invert it. So it could be part of like the, the vent system, you know, and then you could play around with that too, like kind of making it come from different directions. You know and that adds like a secondary level of detail but you see it's just like a simple shape and eventually we'll maybe one of the streams will we'll play around like how to make your own you know if you guys are interested in that or if you guys just want to download there's plenty of stuff out there but if you want to make your own sometimes for a specific shape you kind of have to you could either make it out of a basic shape or just sculpt it out and then make an alpha uh, so we have different ways of doing that but here you see it's pretty cool right like that that adds like some speed to it like now it feels like he's a speedy character and he gets a lot of the air and you know aerodynamics and that type of stuff that i'm thinking about yeah for free it's pretty good i think like um 
maybe half of these are pretty useful for me or maybe maybe not even half there's a lot of these type of things that are like could be cool for a different design not so much for this unless she has some kind of for some reason some latch there which doesn't make sense but I tend to go with more with uh, the simple shapes so here I'm kind of looking around You know, just kind of going through some of these. Some of these are awesome. Some of these are not very useful. Um, so, like, let's say, okay, okay, here we can do that. Let's subdivide this guy. And maybe there is, like, some bolt action happening there. And maybe some bolt action happening there. You know? Maybe right here, too. Maybe these are individual panels. They have to be. See, but this is this is where we start getting into like becoming too noisy so like maybe there's one there and one there so they kind of have that same three uh repetition of three you know i, I kind of could put another one here on this one too but it start it starts to not make sense also so maybe that could be a nice little visual interest and now there's three of them kind of repeating the design So let's see what else can we change. And sometimes what you could do too, which is I have done before, but it doesn't always work out. It's because you can make like a pretty big one. Um, you know, like something that goes in like in the center. Play around with rotating it. Maybe let's pick a better one. Like, like a lot of these ones that have fades are pretty nice because they kind of taper in and out, you know. So maybe he has a little bit of that going on. Maybe he, you know, and that just adds a little more visual interest now in the back here. But it still leaves this area very, very open, so it doesn't feel like, like you're always doing it with the alphas. Uh, let's see, this what other answers? Yeah, I'll put a link to the, to the textures right now too, so that whoever made those, uh, get some credit because they're they're pretty cool. And he, I think he has a giant pack of of, of other ones that he sells. Uh, let me just find that specific one that I grabbed. So this is a specific one that I have, um, that I grabbed and 16 of them that are free, but he has a large collection of other things, uh, which wouldn't be bad to buy. It's not, it's not that expensive either. And then you have a little more things available. Let's see, uh, microphone. Do I have any articulated stuff? No, I don't. Um, Maybe I should think about doing some stuff, some stuff like that. I was thinking of doing like one six figures, but maybe just replacing the heads and the arms, but we'll see. Um, but if you guys want to check out an articulated one, I think uh, Amin Akbar, he, he does uh, my, he does streaming as well. So he has some articulated stuff you guys should check out. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, Amin's a cool guy too. Uh, let's see, Sweet Alpha, free, good for the free pack. No, what well, the way I envision this guy is kind of like a warrior, um, kind of like a hunter, like some kind of henchman or some kind of guy that he could probably be on a, a motorcycle or something, but um, he's kind of a hunter. So you don't never see his eyes. It's always supposed to be intimidating. Like if you just see him like from the shadows, you know, like if you saw that as a silhouette um, in the darkness, it would probably be pretty scary as opposed to just a regular guy with a helmet or motorcycle helmet. So a lot of things that I do too is I do the use the silhouette uh, shader to kind of just see how this is starting to look. You know, I play around with these shaders. Um, well, my favorite is this one, but because I like red, but that's the only reason. This is like a softer version of that. Uh, but a good judge is this one as well. It's just kind of like the Maya blend. So I kind of like having that one. You can start seeing now. You can start seeing some of these things pop, or maybe they don't pop. You know. Uh, so maybe what you could do now is introduce even that alpha. Like right there, you know. Or maybe the other way. Maybe you could make it a little more intense. So it could be a little nice visual in interest or it could be maybe too much. In this case, I feel like it should be more in the front. 
So maybe that's like another air vent or actually it would be nice if you could see it from the front. So there you go. Maybe that's nicer because then you're get, he's also getting air through up there. Um, and it kind of goes with this pattern a little bit. Maybe it should be smaller so that it doesn't compete with that guy. What do you guys think? There you go. Maybe that works a little better. Uh, texture link. Uh, let me put it up here. Copy. Uh, let's see. This should be it. Uh, refine his stuff. Uh, he has tons of stuff, but there's a free pack, so download the free pack and then play around with that. And if you like, I guess, more of his stuff, just uh, go ahead and get some. What's articulating? Like, if you had joints to be able to rotate the head or, like, articulate the helmet to open and close, like, maybe this, this piece... Um, you know, can uh, can shift in like based on the design. That could be cool too. So we could design stuff like that. But since this is stuff just for visuals, like to have some cool stuff around, or if I was making this for a film, I probably would have to think about how it actually rotates. So maybe it needs to contour more of the shape. So when it goes in, or if you take it off, it's easy for you to take it off. Um, but at this point, I'm not really worried about that because it's almost like making it in the pose and that's it. It's only one off and then from there we can decide if we want to do more or not. But, um, you know, this is just for fun. Yeah, yeah, so this is that's the whole point, right? Like some, some of this stuff could feel a little medieval, but it could feel futuristic or steampunk or like what if he was dressed with a, a hoodie, you know, or, or depending on the, I think I had a folder that had, um, let's see. Costumes, right? Like, there was one thing I really liked that I wanted to try, which was this. What if, if it has the contrast of some real simple satin, real simple design, but really complicated, like a helmet and really complicated gloves and boots, so that it kind of throws everything around, you know? And maybe he has just a slight pad uh, for his chest or something, you know? Um, or maybe something like this, where it's still cloth, it keeps them flexible, but he has other things that kind of mimic like the little tassels, little things can maybe mimic on the helmet or on the, on the arms. Um, or like I was saying, we could always make it like this, more samurai-like too. So I'm not opposed to anything. For me, it's like what comes and then we design and evolve from that and make it, go back and make it more realistic so it doesn't feel like it's too out of this world or too, you know, it just feels too fake or you're like, oh, it looks cool, but cartoony. So that's that's the main point with this stuff that we're adding alphas, but you see the alphas add a little bit of visual interest. Let's change this a little bit. Oh, that's the Boolean part, so. Like you don't want to do everything with alphas, you know, like you guys can see that all this stuff or, or like here, like maybe this parts are more complicated. So then maybe this, uh, we got some of those, um, these guys, right? guys a little more so this is what you want to maybe isolate so do to that guy right so maybe they latch on to each other somehow So maybe those are the things that have more more detail, you know, like they're like pieces that are uh, latched together. Obviously we need more resolution, but that could be like the offset, but maybe done uh, with a different thing. Let's see. But one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of these require a lot of resolution. So that's also another thing that we maybe need to add more. They're also added as an additive, a lot bigger. So maybe something that small, 
But in that case, too, if you want more breakup, then you can also do like a. Let's change this to be in a pen. You can do a little bit of an offset on all these. So now that now you're breaking breaking up that big surface, so you can put some different type of detail there, or, or enhance it, or or leave it as is. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Amen. Yeah, he, if you go under schedule or uh, presenters, you'll you'll see his name. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, like a hoodie or something like that that could help. Maybe that even covers half of the stuff on the back. Uh, so it feels like it has a better blend. Yeah, the stitching alphas are pretty cool. Which would be cool to have for this, but this is more mechanical, so it doesn't work. But that's why some of the rivet stuff works better, because uh, then you could imagine like how this stuff was riveted, or when was it made? Does it even made rivets, or is it just a snap uh, magnet uh, type of thing, situation, you know? Or even you could add like bigger alphas. Oh, arm, arm brush. Let's see. You know, you could add stuff that changes the design completely. Maybe not as intense. Let's see, we have about 10 minutes left. You know, so that could also add some visual interest there, even though it was just a ribbit, but now we're adding more, more lines. You know, I could rotate it to kind of mimic that front line. And now we just broke that surface into two more uh, smaller details. Well, so what do you guys think so far? See, I'm kind of happy with that. That's not, that's not too bad, but I feel like maybe it's competing with this, so. Maybe we need to mimic some of that, that flatness uh, we did earlier. But maybe going the other way. So maybe from here to here somewhere. Without this piece. And then just kind of doing that flatness part. I did. And inverting it, flatten that part, flatten that part. So you can start adding some design changes like that, but I think this doesn't work. So it kind of feels like a spaceship too, but now this these guys are bothering me. Let's bring them that to low. It's like a little little lump there that's kind of annoying me. So even here we can still change things, you know. See, like that changes the overall look of him. It starts to make him feel kind of medieval. But maybe we need that curve to kind of keep pushing, making it sharp because so something like that. I don't know. That uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, it could, it could be Dark Souls inspired. You know, I, I never played that game, but I, I know what you're talking about. Um, and then from there, you know, like. Let's say before we continue, because bad things always happen, especially like a couple minutes before you're supposed to be done. Uh, so then from there, we can play with different types of, uh, what is it called? Surface surface detail, you know? Uh, so let's see. Let's do something more broad. So here we added some noise, right? Maybe eh, it's something you don't like. Maybe you want it to be more like uh, like this stuff, you know? But that's like way too much, like too intense. You make it feel worn and torn. Um, that's where you can start changing this to zero and then start applying it. But maybe zero is not enough. Let's see, point zero. Negative point zero. So we need more zeros in there. Too many zeros. 
So you're getting some detail there, you know. Um, So now we're adding some different types of detail, you know, you can start previewing like, how's that read from a distance? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Apply it. So it's softened up. You see now we're now starting to feel like it's more medieval type of, type of stuff. But I want that to be a little more subtle. That's or, or a different type of pattern. So we can look at the library here. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the ch I'm digging the changes too. I'm glad I, I went to extreme with this one and changed it. Uh, yeah, it could be a Dungeons and Dragons type of thing, uh, which is cool. So here's a more. Let's see, this is this is cool too, but maybe it's a little too much. Yeah. So, but not a big deal. We can still change all this stuff, you know. Maybe this is like a super old helmet. Um, let's add some uh, other zeros in here. Let's see, reduce. Maybe add super low detail and apply it. See, that starts to add a little bit more character to it, which is which is cool. Let me change that one now too. The same one. Oh, that added back to that guy. That's weird. Maybe something. Maybe I need to restart ZBrush. Well, I'll do that afterwards. There we go. So we could change this uh, surface. Well, I hope you guys like where the stream went today. I think I'm pretty happy with it so far. That could, you know, that kind of breaks down the overall surface, like where this is much smoother, this is more pebbly and like it's been worn uh, or a different type of metal. Uh, but also, if you don't like it, you could just either put it in a layer or just undo it. In this case, I, I'm not really digging any of these guys. Like maybe I want it to be more like a polished, uh, like a polished uh, metal. So I might want to take it to substance. That's probably when I'll do all this stuff or I want to take a look at that, you know. But let's compare, let me load the other ones. Or... Let's see, I think they might be here already. Let's take a screen grab. Three quarters. Yeah, so next week I'll be at the Lightbox Expo. So if you guys are around, come by and say hi. Um, we can talk about the stream. We can talk about whatever you guys want. Uh, if you guys are in LA, or if not, um, I'll see you guys the week after that. I think the 15th. Even from this to that, look at that, right? So it just takes a little bit of hard hard work to kind of keep pushing through some of these designs. Uh, let's see, where's my original design? Uh, let me load that up real quick. It's not. 
that's the original right there. Take a screen grab of that. Yeah, that's what it's all about, creating on the fly and just trying new things and seeing how things are working out. So this is kind of where we landed with both of these guys, you know, and that third option I really didn't like, but I'm glad I, we explored it. So I think for the next stream, I'll probably finesse some of this stuff, add a little more details, show you guys how I did that, and then do some renders, put some UVs, and then uh, I'll probably print a prototype before then. So you guys can see what that looks like and we can see if all this stuff is even working in the actual real world. Um, but yeah, what did you guys think? Uh, worked out for you guys? You guys are cool with that? Yeah, I'm glad you guys like uh, the design talk because that's that's for me. That's what it's all about. Sorry about some of the tangents, but you know, I, I try to keep them all related to the stream and what we're doing here. Oh, thanks, thanks, guys. I really appreciate you guys your feedback on how the stream is going. Thanks. I'm just reading all the comments, so if I I'm, look like I'm not doing anything, it's just uh, I really like all the feedback. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, that was about two hours. You know, this is where we got. Um, we'll probably put a little visor and print this stuff out, and then we'll see what it looks like as a prototype next time. Cool. Well, thank you, guys. I'll see you guys uh, next time on the 15th uh, or at the Lightbox Expo. All right. Have a good day, guys. Yeah, take care. Yeah, it will be. Thank you. Happy Z brushing. See you guys.